very simple um, purpose of, of this webinar, and it's to address how stem cells are, are solving pain. Um, this is a question and uh, answer um, that came from Kimberly R from area code 514. Her question here was incredibly important to not only what we're doing, but why we're doing this. And her question is how to avoid surgery for lumbar stenosis. Um, there's a study that comes back from 2018 that showed a success rates of spinal surgeries to be just over 50%. That's just barely better than a coin toss. Now, keep in mind when, when that one of two surgeries fail, you're looking at a possible second, third, or fourth surgery, and those success rates are 30, 15, and 5%. So what we're talking about here is, is an inherent failure in um, the rates of success for what is probably one of the most common diagnoses and problems um, that we deal with as a population now. And that's all of North America, not just the US, but Canada as well. Next uh, slide. We all have the common goals when we think about this. Number one, uh, we'd like to avoid surgery. Um, number two, we'd like to stop medications of all kinds, not just the ones that are meant for pain, but the medications that we take for blood pressure, for depression, for uh, diabetes. Uh, number three, we want a quality of life. Um, and the quality of life piece at the end of it is, is what we're looking to gain. Um, and, and this is in relation to, or, or this is in relative to quantity of life. We're, we're always thinking about how to live longer, but not necessarily how to make our quality of life better. To give you an idea of this uh, current webinar that we're all watching here today, uh, we've had 68 people sign up from various reasons, but this is a pretty popular topic for, I think, a lot of people. When we talk about these goals, uh, we want the physician, we want the doctor, we want the caretaker to tell us about a plan that's going to ensure a couple of things. Number one, we all want a plan. We want somebody to say, all right, here's what we're going to do first, here's what we're going to do second, and so on. But not only that, but we want that plan to be safe. We want there to be a very low risk associated with it. We don't want to feel like we're risking our life in order to, to achieve these goals. We want a short recovery. We don't want to be in rehab forever. We don't want to be in the hospital forever. We don't want to be uh, in bedridden forever or using a walker or crutches. And lastly, we want to avoid pitfalls. We don't want hidden risks or hidden <clears throat> costs of the procedure. When I say hidden costs, not, mo not necessarily monetary costs, but hidden uh, features of, of the therapy that we didn't know about. For example, when you have a knee replacement, and a lot of times it's not discussed with you that certain activities and certain motions you, you should never ever do again. And these are the sort of pitfalls that we'd like to avoid. And certainly uh, spine surgery is, is no different. <laughs> Here's a couple of examples of um, our patients and how they have uh, fared. The first example is of a retired psychologist who flies airplanes for a hobby, also happens to be a runner. The running is competitive and also an important part of, part of stress relief. The onset of back pain ended the running. So no more competition, no more fun, no more stress relief. Uh, and it also limited his flying, uh, flying time, uh, which was an important part of his, his uh, uh, hobby and, and his stress relief. Uh, the second was a chef who enjoys spending time with his family. Constant motion, however, was making uh, heavy restaurant equipment movement uh, difficult. Um, this was affecting his work. Um, it was uh, making the workday difficult. Uh, and he ultimately was thinking about changing uh, careers. 
so many times though, in for these patients and, and as well as others, we're missing the target. And the re reasons that we're missing the targets is that uh, traditional treatments have some severe limits. Number one, surgery, it's permanent, it's invasive. It's, it comes with it a, a, a long recovery that a lot of us have some hesitancy to commit with. We've got uh, not only traveling, but family or jobs, works, or all these other activities that we've uh, had planned or, or want to look forward to, but now we have to put on hold because of this this um, this therapy, which you know is is maybe no better than a coin toss. Next is medications. <clears throat> Steroids inherently um, are a band aid. And people have been going to them every three months, every two months, uh, but they weaken and they damage tissue. Um, unfortunately, that means that with the repeat steroid um, injections that you're getting, you're effectively repetitively weakening and repetitively damaging that tissue. OTC stands for over-the-counter and medications like Advil, Motrin, Ibuprofen, Tylenol, they certainly have the power of lessening your symptoms, but those effects wear off. That means you have to repeat the dose over and over and you're finding yourself reaching for the medication more, more often, more pills, more different types. Um, so there are some limitations. Two months after stem cell therapy for our patients, the psychologist was back to running, ran the 4th of July race here uh, near our hometown, uh, was a four mile race. He said he wasn't at his uh, fighting pace, which was a 13, which is a 13 minute pace, but nonetheless, he was able to run and, and, and ran it happily. Uh, gave him enough confidence to think about training for a half marathon uh, now with his grandson. The chef now is back at work full time, able to provide for his family, continue to do the, the things that he enjoys, uh, especially spending time with them. The thing that one patient talked about with us this week was that they were afraid of this cycle and that cycle was between pain and degeneration or pain and weakness. And the unfortunate effect that pain has is that it does lead to degeneration. And if you lead to degeneration, it leads to further episodes of pain. You are doing less, getting weaker. And of course, you're, you're trapped bounce, back, bouncing back and forth uh, between these two states. And obviously that's what we're here for. And this is what we're uh, aiming to, to discuss. What I really want to present to everybody is, is the idea of a third solution that between steroids or medications and surgery um, is this big gap. It's, it's, a, it's a canyon, really, of, of uh, lack of things to, to do or to try. But here is the solution, a third solution that has a multitude of advantages. Number one, it has a high success rate, higher than surgery. Number two, we're talking about years of relief. So we're, we're better than medication. Uh, and lastly, we're talking about guaranteed acceptance. We're not talking about a possibility of your body rejecting what's happening to you, but we're talking about a 100% guaranteed acceptance of your body to what's going on. Uh, and it is this gradual and progressive improvement, just like uh, in the graph that I showed you there. But what exactly is regenerative medicine? So clearly it's a new field. The goal of it here is unlike the surgeries of, of hardware, metal, plastic, it, it's not to replace, but more to restore the area. The idea is to take, <clears throat> to take damaged tissue and turn it into healthy and functional tissue. And there are different materials that we're using in order to restore this health. The two primary are being number one platelets, which is also known as platelet-rich plasma, PRP, and then lastly, stem cells. In the green, yellow, red circle there, uh, PRP is great for green and yellow, meaning let's say small to small moderate problems. And then stem cells are more sort of reserved for the moderate to moderately large problems. 
Um, and that's the way I would think about, well, as you start to think about, well, what is the issue that I have and which is the thing that's going to be more appropriate for me? Here's a good um, uh, microscopic video sequence of what actually happens with stem cells. The red up in the top right corner is bad and the green are the good cells. And the green basically approach the red and convert it from bad to, to, to good. Even though what we're talking about is cells and we're talking about what, something very microscopic on the macroscopic at the, what we as humans experience level, we're talking about these list of symptoms on the side. We're talking about pain. We're talking about stiffness, sciatica, nerve pain, neuropathy, numbness, the shooting symptoms, the aching, the grabbing type uh, symptoms that we feel. That's what's going on in the red. And if you can imagine the green uh, being either platelet-rich plasma or stem cells going into that region and being able to convert that, we can help eliminate those, those symptoms on the left. I like to describe uh, the issue that we develop with pain and inflammation as the Pac-Man problem. <clears throat> if, we've, if anybody's ever played Pac-Man before, you know that the pellets are the, inf uh, are, are the thing that Pac-Man has to go around and gobble up. Um, but to us, our body, in our bodies, the pellets are actually the inflammation. Pac-Man uh, eating one pellet at a time might be, let's say, what PRP uh, could do for you. Now, take, in fact, uh, uh, many Pac-Man eating pellets, multiple pellets all at the same time. Let's say that that's more like what, what stem cells are doing for you. The goal here is to, to beat the problem, to leave the problem behind and stop playing this game. Um, ultimately, with stem cells, that's what's achievable. To what degree? We're talking about five to 10 years of relief through this process. So again, five to 10 years of relief, stop playing this game, stop chasing the inflammation, stop chasing the pellets and move on with your life, play a different game. Where exactly do the cells come from? Here uh, on the example of degenerative disc disease on the right um, uh, is, is shown in that, that pictured um, uh, sequence there. The revolving picture on the left is your pelvis, and that's where our uh, stem cells are, are, are coming from. If you can imagine uh, the back of that pelvis there as it comes spinning around, um, there's a flat portion to it, um, and we utilize a special equipment, special needles, uh, that help us uh, gain the materials out of there. So very quick, about 15 minutes done right here in the office. Um, relatively painless. I say relatively because we, we uh, uh, numb it uh, quite a bit. You have medications that you take beforehand. And again, very, very well tolerated. So let's talk about the timeline. This is something you've decided you're interested in and you want to uh, explore what this is going to look like for you and in, in the next several weeks of your life. So what we have here is a timeline. So initial consultation is 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 critical. Without the consultation, it's hard to know what we're going to do for you. Um, the next step is to obtain an MRI. We have our own MRI. Don't feel like you have to go get one yourself. If you have one, great. If it's a little old, that's fine. Uh, the important portion is for us to have that conversation. We would form the MRI, um, and that'll give us an exa exact idea of what it is that we're targeting, what it is exactly that needs to be treated, and obviously our MRI protocol, our, our MRI protocols are designed for that. So soon after that, we do our first injection, which is a platelet-rich plasma. Then a couple of weeks later, we'll do a stem cell and platelet-rich plasma combined injection. And then several weeks later, the third, immediately after that, immediately after that third injection, we're starting physical therapy. We're starting chiropractic care. We're starting an exercise routine. All this typically done within only a few short weeks. Uh, and remember, that's not in the hospital. You're not traveling. Um, 
to a surgery center, you're not being admitted to a hospital, you're taking care of this here in our office, and then you would return home. So what can we treat? Um, when it comes to the neck and the back, it's one continuous piece, but the same problems that exist in the low back also exist in the neck. So we treat things like stenosis, arthritis, degenerative disc disease, sciatica, or up in the neck, we would uh, identify that as numbness or tingling. Uh, the lower body, we, again, more arthritis, bursitis symptoms, meniscus damages of the knee, Achilles tendon, uh, arthritis of the ankle, all uh, problems we have uh, had successful treatment and therapy with. Shoulder, arm, we're talking about the rotator cuff, we're talking about the arthritis of, of a shoulder, tennis elbow, carpal tunnel. People always want to know, well, am I a candidate? Well, the, the best way for us to answer that is if it can be injected, if it can be operated on, we can perform stem cell therapy on it. Meaning that if I can, if I can reach that or if I can visualize that with our, with our uh, equipment, then yes, we can inject it. And that uh, you'd be surprised by how much we can get through and across just by the equipment in, in our office. What's important to us is the diagnosis. We, we need an accurate diagnosis. And without an accurate diagnosis, we don't have accurate therapy. And I'm going to say that again. Without an accurate diagnosis, we don't have accurate therapy. Um, we are uh, unique. We are unique in that we are the only regenerative medicine provider in a, in a large, large area um, that does have our own MRI. So we have not just the diagnostic ability, um, but the therapeutic ability. We're, we're looking for the specific problem. We're able to find it uh, and then deliver that therapy. If you can't have an, uh, have an MRI, uh, don't despair. There are other alternatives, and we'll talk about that here soon. Uh, a lot of people like to ask, what if I've had surgery? Um, can I still be a candidate for this? And the answer is yes. Uh, important for us is that consultation, <clears throat> that initial consultation where you may have notes, you may have some uh, imaging, you may have uh, MRI reports, CT scans, x-rays, doctor's notes where we can review that and understand uh, how exactly that we, we uh, can help you. Um, the type of surgery is important, whether you've had arthroscopy or fusion or rotator cuff surgery, um, uh, and, and of course, when that was done. Here's some common frequently asked questions we like to get. <clears throat> Where will my stem cells come from? Uh, so we just discussed that stem cells come from the posterior of your pelvis. Um, and then some people, for example, knees, hips, and shoulders um, can, can ha also have uh, stem cells uh, coming from their, their uh, spine as well. Um, the next question of how long before I can become active? So between that second and third injection, it's a, typically a four week wait. Pretty soon after that, uh, we're letting people get back to activity. A uh, question of when do I feel the benefits? So it can be as quickly as one to, to four weeks after that second injection. So the, by the time you come in for that third injection, many of our patients are already saying, yep, I see, I see the benefit and it is just this progressive um, improvement um, that can uh, take several weeks, sometimes several months to, to reach its final benefits or maximum benefits, I should say. How long will the tissue stay repaired? So this is an important piece to us. Uh, and, and this is where we really feel like we have both the experience to, to, to tell you this and, and as well as um, the, the, the knowledge set in, in getting these sorts of results. When we're, when our office, when, when I, when, when my team is involved, we're looking at results anywhere from uh, five to 10 years. And that varies depending on what we're, we're treating. But again, we're talking about years of relief, not just days, weeks, months. Pain shouldn't be managed. Pain should be solved. Um, 
And then the next question of how well this works, it, it works very well. It will, works longer than medications, like I was saying before, and then works uh, with a higher degree of success than, than, than the surgeries did. All right, let's get to some questions and answers here. So Kathleen C from the 518 area code asked us this very important question uh, or, or statement. She has chronic degenerative disc disease with neuropathy that's now hindering her lifestyle, has bilateral leg weakness, difficulty ascending the stairs. When we talk about degenerative disc disease, we're talking about um, a process not that different from herniation. So degenerative, uh, when we talk about herniation, I like to talk about the, the donut model. It is when the jelly wants to leave the donut suddenly. Now, Degenerative disc disease is when that jelly is slowly leaking out of the donut, and that donut being, of course, your disc. Um, the circle here, the dark black circle here with the picture underneath, shows where that blue material is. That's your disc, and if material starts pushing towards that chronic uh, or sometimes even sudden irritation of that yellow nerve. So our therapies are... Are, are excellent at treating both the acute and the chronic problem. So even if you've had it decades, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, we've treated people with decade long pain. Uh, we've had uh, people who've had uh, acute and sudden pain that's only been around for, for a month, but enough to hinder their lifestyle, prevent them from standing up out of bed, um, preventing them from going to work. Uh, so very, very successful with um, this sort of therapy. Uh, Sherry H. from area code 518 uh, asked about arthritis in the back, hip, and knees. Yes, uh, the wide, there is a very wide range of applications. So he, hips, knees, shoulders, ankles are all things that we've treated uh, quite successfully with this. Um, and this is really the alternative, right, for, for getting rid of uh, even, having, even having to think about a replacement surgery. Uh, when we talk about places like ankles or when we talk about places like shoulders, these are these are relatively new things. And, and, and sometimes the results of these can have pretty significant impact and in, in limitations. For us, once we are done with our therapies, we, we, we set you free. You do as you see fit. There's no limitation. We don't have hardware to think about. Um, another really uh, common treated area for us is the SI joint, and, 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 uh, and that's uh, sometimes part of the low back sequence as well. Michael G. asks, well, uh, from, from the 518 area code, looking for other alternatives besides surgery. Michael, this is it. This is it. We are the third solution. We are not surgery. We are not medications. We are a clear difference. Uh, and when I say clear difference, we're talking about uh, a, a, a very significant uh, removal of pain for a long period of time. And I, I know sometimes that, that sounds like a, a difficult thing to achieve, um, but um, I assure you that's, that's what we're doing. Deirdre from the 514 area code says, why do I continue to have pain after two spinal fusions? And this is where I think some of the, the these webinars are so valuable. The first few slides are, are, are pretty much the same every time, but it's these sorts of questions that have great value. Uh, so Deirdre, the answer is, um, let me start off with an example. If you've ever had a coworker that doesn't do their job, you end up having to do more. So what happens to you in the long run? You end up getting burned out, you get frustrated, you get annoyed. So in the fusion, what essentially is happening is you're using plates and screws to connect two vertebrae, forcing them to no longer be flexible, meaning that they no longer work. That means the disc above and the disc below have to pick up that slack, have to pick up that work. This leads to what we call adjacent segment disease. That means you are the disc above and you, or you are the disc below, maybe, maybe you're both. And because of your increasing workload, over time, you're going to get burned out. You're going to get fatigued. You're going to get degenerated. You're going to start to break down. 
Um, so many people after spinal fusions or, or have have some level perhaps of relief, but you're more than likely to develop this thing called uh, adjacent segment disease. And that's why you still have pain. The answer is that we still treat this adjacent segment disease. Obviously, you're looking to avoid further fusions, avoid future surgeries. And the answer for us has always been stem cells with um, uh, excellent success. Scott L. asked from 315, area code, what parts of the body can it be used on? How long does it take to work? How long does it last? And is it covered by insurance? Um, we're talking about over uh, the course of my career, I've done been doing this for 10 years and we've uh, done this for all sorts of things, right? So you have a picture of a thumb there. A lot of thumbs uh, come, to people with thumb arthritis and pain come to us because there isn't a replacement surgery and uh, cortisone is, is not great. So we've done it for virtually every joint in a person's hand, virtually every joint in a person's foot. Uh, you can see results anywhere from one to four weeks. And we're talking about something that lasts five to 10 years. Um, and unfortunately, at this point in time, insurance does not cover yet. Maybe that'll change. Georgian from Georgian T from area code 518 asks research studies to support regenerative methods, success rates to decrease the herniated nerve pain, and cost. So um, the number of st studies that exist now compared to five years ago and moving forward are just absolutely exploding. It is, it is gaining a lot of speed, a lot of momentum. Um, for people who are having herniated nerve uh, pain, uh, we see a high degree of response. This is a very successfully treated area for us. Um, obviously, you, for, for us, we're, we're sort of that bottom of the bottleneck where a lot of people are looking to avoid surgery, and so they come to find us. So this is something we see quite often. Uh, with regards to costs, uh, really hard to say, really vary. Uh, would need to see you in person, consultation, um, etc. Joseph M. asked from 518, spine pain for my mother. Uh, Joseph, uh, look into this. This is your third solution. It's not surgery, not medications. Keep her out of the hospital. Keep her away from COVID. Uh, look for the, that alternative. Um, the conversation with us, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of patients who, who are sort of brought in because of their sons or daughters or grand, uh, you know, grandchildren saying, look, um, there's, there's this thing out there and maybe it can help you avoid surgery. And, and that's exactly what we're doing. Peter H asked from the 954 area code, the processes potential for success to reduce pain given my degenerative disc disease cost again, long-term effects and potential drawbacks um, for, your degenerative disc disease, your DDD, we're talking about a, a, a simple elimination of the pain or a massive reduction of the pain, enough so that um, it may not be that thing that you think of first thing in the morning. It is not the thing that you think of before you decide to go to the grocery store. The, 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 the real value here is in the risk-benefit ratio. When we talk about risk and benefit, Let's say the risk in surgery is high. And we all understand that. We all know that. But why is it high? It's high because of general anesthesia. Where it's high because of post-operative complications, infections, uh, blood clots, um, uh, comorbidities. Uh, if you're diabetic, if you if you're high, have high blood pressure, these all elevate your risk. And the benefit of what? You know, maybe a couple of years when it comes to surgery. For us, the risk is really no different than somebody doing that cortisone injection, that epidural injection. It's, it's honestly um, the, the very, very similar process. There's obviously some slight differences um, and obviously a huge difference in what we're injecting. We're not using steroids and we're not using cortisone. We're using your own body's power through stem cells and PRP um, but that's uh, uh, what we utilize, um, and that's where we're seeing the benefit. And so when you talk about risk, it's small with, with regenerative medicine, and then this, this really large benefit 
ratio, and, and that's really hard to beat. The other benefit to this is we're talking about years of relief. We're talking about uh, when you talk about potential for success, our, our results are, are something that we last year, uh, that lasts years and that we see for years. We obviously like to do yearly uh, follow-ups, at least phone calls, if not in-person uh, follow-ups. And, and so we've followed people out for years. And so, so we know that the time span in, in which we're, we're, we're seeing these results. Jenny R asks, how to regenerate the facets and discs from 438? I believe this is a question from maybe a prior month. Um, but the facet is another additional portion to your spine. So when a lot of people develop arthritis, it's not just a disc, it's not just a facet. They usually go together. And for us, when we're treating this, these are all things that we sort of treat in package. We, we, we go after all of these, these uh, different, unique individual areas. And so the, the, sometimes the, the procedures can take, you know, um, uh, a couple of hours or, you know, we spread out uh, the number of injections over, over several weeks. It's for this very reason. Gail K from Mary Code 310 says she's got back pain, nerve pain from stenosis, arthritis, fibromyalgia, osteoporosis, RLS, which stands for restless leg syndrome. Arthritis is a very common diagnosis. So when people have findings like stenosis, findings like fibromyalgia, they are a lot of times stemming from, from, uh, from some source, from some initial problem, something like arthritis. For us, obviously a very common diagnosis, something we see uh, very often and uh, have, uh, have uh, you know, come to recognize arthritis as, as a very, uh, successful treatment problem, successful treatment area for us. Winslow from area code 315 says, I'm dealing with disc issues, dealing with right arm uh, severe weakness. Sure. So here is a great diagram um, and the yellow bundle in the middle, those little yellow dots is your spinal cord. And that yellow sort of egg that comes out of the right or yellow egg that comes out of the left is the nerves that go down your body. Now the blue underneath is all disc. So you can see how close that disc is to not just the spinal cord, but to those nerves. Meaning that when the disc starts to degenerate or when it creates this herniation or this slow leak of material and it starts to push upward, either towards the cord or towards either nerve, it's, it's uh, uh, not difficult to see why you're going to start developing some right arm weakness. That nerve that used to flow out of there so nicely uh, starts to get affected by the disc. Ruth from area code 518, uh, this is a great question. So she's got a calcified tendonitis in the shoulders and mild bulging disc of C4C7 with nerve pain. Is there a cure for someone who deposits calcium in joints, uh, which has led to inflammation? Uh, absolutely. So let's talk about your cervical disc degeneration. Again, the same picture from uh, the previous slide, you see the close relationship. This here is uh, the lumbar spine. Um, but basically, it's the same relationship in the neck. When it comes to your calcific tendinopathy, we do do this uh, specialized procedure called a needle barbitage. And oftentimes, we're mixing in platelet-rich plasma and stem cell to help the healing process. So calcified uh, tendons in, in both shoulders, and uh, sometimes people develop in, in other parts of the body, something we see often. Uh, and, and, and quite successfully cured. And it's all, again, done in office, in office procedure, short time periods. Judith, uh, area code 315. Um, this one's a little bit of a heartbreaker. She says, I have unexplained debilitating pain. And uh, she says, life is on hold. Why does my back go into spasms after only being on my feet, cooking, cleaning, sewing, yard work for about an hour? Already had surgery on the cerebral spine. Will this procedure still work? Yeah, this is this this is why this is what we 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 feel so strongly about what we do is that we can really um, take that life on hold and put you back. 
um, in, into the swing of things, back into your normal routine. You saw on the previous slides the, the stacking of both um, discs and, and uh, bone. You can sort of see when that stack, when standing up, the pressure exerts down. Um, and that blue uh, disc material starts irritating more. Backwards, backwards and to the left, backwards and to the right. And that's all time dependent. The more you stand, the more that sort of uh, is going to create that impact. Until you take that rest, you go lay down, you do something, you feel a little bit better. And then, and then it all starts all over again. Obviously, not just a nuisance into life, but uh, into life, but but you know, creating some severe impacts. Uh, for us, yeah, yes, it's it's a very common reason people that come to us. It's not just uh, you know our prior example of people flying planes or going to work, but sometimes it's simple as I, I I can't get through school day, I can't get through a work day, I can't get through um, you know the 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 things that I need to do at home. These 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 activities of daily living even after you've had surgery even if you've had surgery and it's failed you can still see us and still have success surgery is not a reason uh for for future failures um so it's it's but it's also important for us to understand you um, and understand what extent of surgery you've had uh, this is from lapine uh, Lapine, I believe, uh, from area code four five zero in in our um, in our uh, French neighbors up north. So this was written in French, but the uh, translation is moderate. Uh, that I have moderate bilateral C two C three facet osteoarthritis on the right, slight left C three C four osteoarthritis, uh, discrete degenerative discography mild C5-C6, temporary osteoarthritis, 10 millimeter di diameter hemangioma in the vertebral body of T10. Also L4-L5, degenerative disc disease, no herniation. Um, and I believe uh, something about the MRI that you've just had. Going to have injections in the neck and lower back. Um, can't, well, can't walk too long or often and sit and, and feeling the need to sit down. Uh, inflammation is, is, you know, sounds like it's running rampant. Uh, don't know if your method uh, is for my case, how much it costs, how many times I have to have in order to have an improvement. Um, coming from Quebec, uh, age of 67. Uh, and planning on uh, infiltration after the holidays by a physiatrist, infiltration being an injection. So Lapine, this is this is absolutely what we see. This is very common for us, just the progressive developing degenerative changes that seem to be impacting your life more and more. And you want to be active. You want to still do things, accomplish things. You have goals. There are places you want to go, people that you want to see. Um, and this is holding you back from it. We, we absolutely do help people in, in, in your situation. Uh, for you, I would say we also offer French uh, translation, in-office translation. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I certainly recommend you uh, starting off with a consultation. We will be in Montreal on January 30th for a... Um, in-person uh, uh, seminar. Uh, we have a um, uh, office date and time on February uh, 14th, Valentine's Day in Plattsburgh. Uh, so if you plan for a consultation, that would be the first day to come meet us. Patricia H. in area code 315 says, well, I've been seeing uh, ads uh, about this um, or ads through this. Uh, could this help me? Uh, as I'm reading on, I cannot have an MRI, so I will have to pass. So an MRI, uh, so I just wanted to talk briefly about briefly about MRI value versus imaging value. And the MRI, for those who think that they have to have an MRI for us to do our procedure, not true. An MRI is for us what we like to see, but it is not what we have to see. Um, and for those who are thinking, I need to get an MRI, 
also not true. We have our own MRI. We will do your MRI. Um, and we prefer our um, protocol in order to do it. So we see, we answer the questions that we're specifically asking. Um, so for any of that, so either you can't have an MRI, you think you need to get an MRI, not true. Um, uh, start off with the consultation and, and we um, can figure out the steps from there. Uh, Charles A. Uh, S. from Area Code 602 asks, can you work with a 78-year-old who cannot take an MRI due to pacemaker? Absolutely. Uh, pacemaker is fine. We've had many, many people with pacemakers, with spinal stimulators, other metallic implanted devices. Not an issue. Don't need an MRI. Uh, if you have an MRI, then great. If not, we can do other options like CT scan. We can do things as little as x-ray in order to make our decisions, um, but we, we try to push for the most amount of information because that helps us make our decisions. So MRI, CT, x-ray, these are all viable. Elizabeth asked from 518, treatment for sciatica and degenerative disc. So it's always important for me to mention about sciatica and sciatica really is a symptom. It's not a diagnosis. Uh, for us, the question is, well, why do you have the sciatica? What is the diagnosis is that is, what is the diagnosis that's creating the sciatica? And for us, degenerative disc disease is often the cause, often the culprit. Here's a great uh, illustration of how the degenerating disc in the blue is pushing all this red, onto that very important spinal cord or the nerves that come out the side. And of course, the disc does not regenerate on its own. And so it is only going to get progressively worse. If it's something you feel now, you can bet with a certain amount of certainty within a year or five years, whatever, um, that it's going to get worse. So it's important to, to, to be early with something. Elizabeth T from 514 asks, how do you get rid of sciatica over six months? So very good uh, question and a great segue from the last slide. Um, what's important here is to talk about the difference between what is acute, subacute, and chronic. So these are three different stages that a lot of physicians like myself like to think about disease, diseases. Acute is something that's happened maybe within the last couple of weeks. Subacute, that is something that's been ongoing for, let's say, several months. And chronic, that's, you know, tipping six months into the year. And obviously, anybody who's had issues for, for several years. So, you know, diabetes, for example, is a chronic disease. It's something that's going to be there for years. So in your case, Elizabeth, we're talking about uh, six months uh, in, in you're really sort of pushing into that chronic territory. What I have to tell you though, is that nerve pain and time are very closely related. Nerve pain and nerve damage and time are also closely related. Um, I like to use the houseplant idea. So some houseplants uh, you, you, you can't bring back. Um, some plants with a little bit of water, a little bit of sunlight, sure, you can get back. But nerves are sort of that way. And some nerves early on, you can uh, have them rehabilitate, have them get better. But certain nerves, after a certain point, once they've gotten into the deep chronic state, you can't uh, bring them back in. No surgery, no injection, no medication, no anything is going to do that. So for those who experience nerve issues, treat it early. If you have pain and you don't have nerve issues, treat it early because sooner or later, the involvement of the nerve is something you are at risk for. So it's important to recognize this and do something about it. Uh, Kevin H. Das from the 518 area code PRP stem cell research backed application for bulging discs, wear, and degeneration. So that faded picture in the back there for you, Kevin, is, is, is key to this. When we talk about a disc, that, um, uh, that three-quarter round uh, cutout on the, on the right of the faded picture is what we call the vertebral end plate. Now, vertebral end plates are essentially cartilage. And over time, you lose blood supply in that end plate. That means all that disc material underneath doesn't get the nutrition, doesn't get the nutrients 
that you normally would in order to recover from damage, in order to recover from herniation, in order to recover from a bulge. The role of platelet-rich plasma and stem cells is to go into that spot, let's say where that nucleus pulposus is, and then eliminate inflammation. But not only is it doing that, it is encouraging for your body to develop a blood supply. <clears throat> Doing so will give that disc health, not perfect health, but health. Long enough that in our office, six to 10 years is a reasonable time frame for us to discuss, for us to have you look for, have you look towards. Overall, the growing body of research for degenerative disc is, 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 is going to explode, as I said before. And that is because there is this wide gap between essentially steroids, nothing, 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 and then surgery. We're here to fill that gap. We're here to fill that void. John W. from 914 asks, bone on bone, knee movement, no current pain but a lot of snapping, crackling. Uh, don't go any further to prevent falling. Nerve damage from the spine from falls in 2015 and 17. Um, the best way I, I, I like to approach this, John, is that nerves are, are essentially wires from the spinal cord to the muscle, and the muscle then drives strength. And you need all the parts of that working communication between your spinal cord to down to the muscle in order for you to have motor, in order for you to have movement, in order for you to prevent from falling. Obviously, if you don't do that, if you don't, if you don't exercise this, you're going to develop weakness. And it's a result of damage. So when people say, well, I'm getting weaker, yes, it is because of either one of two things, something broken in the communication or because you're also not using it. And so you get progressively weak. But then we talked about that pain and degeneration cycle. Then you're caught. Obviously, uh, nerve damage and, and muscle damage is, is something that can occur from, from traumas like falls. But it is to really break out of that cycle that that we're able to accomplish that we're able to give you so that the whole nerve degeneration cycle is, is, is something you, you don't have to deal with anymore. <clears throat> Anna R from 315 says excruciating pain. She's been in excruciating pain for a few years. Several MRIs showing bulging discs, severe stenosis, ankylosis, um, sciatic pain, daily physical therapy, numerous injections, not sure where or what to do anymore. And that's another heartbreak. Spine surgeon tells me I would be considered high risk for surgery. So they're even eliminating that off the table. So keep getting injections. That, that's, that's disheartening. We talked about that treatment gap between what steroids can do for a very limited bit. And then when that doesn't do it, somebody's talking about surgery. And in Anna's case, that doesn't even exist. So between steroid and surgery is a real canyon, but I can tell you that PRP and stem cells have, have really filled in that, that gap. Uh, the risk in surgery overall is not small. Uh, and you take in and you add in somebody like Anna who has perhaps some simple or even some complex medical histories that make the idea of surgery hard, uh, puts you at high risk. Stem cell in that regard has an almost perfect risk benefit equation. It is not perfect, but when it comes to the risk benefit equation, it is near perfect. The risk is low and the benefit is high. So when we talk about that, that relationship, um, it is a much easier thing to, to think about, a much easier thing to understand. You're not doing surgery, you're not doing medications, you're taking your own cells, you're applying it to damaged area to regenerate, repair, and, and, and have this last for years. So I just walked you through that risk-benefit ratio of, of stem cells. 
Um, and unfortunately, you know, Anna has been suffering like this, but I really believe that no one has to live this way. Dominic RP from 315 says, I'm looking for information about the needs. And yes, again, another very successful treatment area for us. It's one of the more well studied joints. Um, so there's a lot of already data around it, supporting it, um, proving it. Um, it was our first joint, I misspelled it. Our first joint 10 years ago was in the knee. And M from area code 315 says, has asked us to explain the procedure step by step, step by step, uh, discuss patient outcomes. Uh, so you, you heard about our uh, psychologist and our chef early on. Uh, the step-by-step -step procedure, happy to discuss it, um, really recommend the consultation. But the main points are this, that the therapy typically, overall, for any one person, is typically done within six weeks. Obviously, some people are a little bit different. Issues can vary a little bit. Um, we take care of the MRI, so that, uh, uh, we, that's something we uh, perform. Now, we have done, read by a radiologist, um, and, and all done prior to the time of stem cell. Uh, improvements is typically within the first one to four weeks. And again, we're talking about results, five to 10 years. Uh, so those are the major points that you want to walk away with there. Deb N from 518, help for neck pain. So she has uh, both degenerative disc disease and bone spurs in the neck. Um, and when we talk about the neck, we're talking about the upper spine and a lot of nerve related symptoms are, uh, uh, are, are the, uh, the unfortunate consequence from degenerative disc and bone spurs in the lower spine, uh, what we call the low back. Again, nerve related symptoms are what we call sciatica or the numbness tingling that you may feel in your toes or something, sometimes we call radiculopathy where you feel the pain sort of shooting down your, 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 the back of your leg. <clears throat> Discs are similar regardless of where they degenerate, whether they be in the neck or in the low back. Um, and the therapies that we apply, very similar. Slightly different in terms of technique, obviously. Uh, it, you know, Getting to the neck and getting to the low back, very different. Um, but from a technique standpoint, that, that's on us. But in terms of for, for our patients to understand, very very similar uh, process, and then it's, and, and then of course then similar outcomes. Elizabeth T asked from area code five one four the rate of success. What does the procedure involve and the cost? Success uh, rates, quote unquote, in general for us are are are, are high, much better than surgery, much better than that uh, one out of two person in surgery. Um, and we're talking about, again, uh, and I said it before, but, you know, a therapy that lasts, results that last much longer than steroids. I'm happy to go over the consultation with you, um, Elizabeth, and helping us understand what we're treating, whether it's the neck or the low back or the knee or the hip, um, can, can, you know, help us understand what uh, sort of success rates we could, we could be talking about with you. Jill R from 518 says, low back pain, like to see if this would help. Pain affects everyday life. Um, it seems like this is a common theme in today's webinar. So our process, expecting to last five, five to 10 years. Uh, and, and I think the thing that we are doing most is not necessarily the quantity of people's lives. I don't know if we're necessarily making people live longer, but I know that we're creating a, an improvement in their quality of life. And, and that's really where I would say that our impact is greatest. Um, here's a good example of, of what I mean. Uh, with our therapy and at the end of our therapy, a lot of our patients will walk away saying, you know, I feel like I can exercise every day versus uh, a lot of people when they first come to us, it's like, I can only exercise it every four days because I need three more days for the swelling, the inflammation and the pain to subside or go away. And some people haven't exercised in months, but that's the sort of impact that, that I know that we've, we've been creating for the last uh, 10 years of the practice. Louis D from 315 says, additional deterioration going on my L5. What can you do to help with that? Um, you know, much of what we just talked about, Luis, um, uh, it can be applied to, to single discs like that. Um, 
one of the important parts about what we do as well is that the therapies that we provide can either slow or stop further deterioration. So we could help um, you maintain what you have, not only be you know pain free, but you know help help the progression of the arthritis uh, certainly slow down. Um, next is uh, Anna D from uh, 450 area code and again from Montreal or, or in Quebec, I should say, <clears throat> questions there in, in, in French. Um, for us, the therapies really depend on the person. So um, she's asking about uh, um, the, the, the pro uh, therapies that we provide uh, and they really do depend on, on what you're act looking to treat whether it's the low back, whether it's the neck, whether it's the hip, whether it's the knee. Um, for us uh, to, to, to certainly aid anybody watching this, our consultations to you guys are gonna be free now that you've uh, sat and listened uh, and watched me talk for an hour. Um, and that'll help us too. Uh, it'll help us understand you and we can explain our process more thoroughly to you uh, beyond this, this webinar here. Diane B asked, uh, from the 518 shoulders or bone and bone, had a cortisone shot three weeks apart, don't want surgery, uh, looking for alternatives. The shoulders bear mention. <clears throat> the shoulders are a very complex joint. And typically, if you look at shoulder stem cell success, it generally, for a lot of practices, has not been high. Uh, our approach to the shoulder is a little bit unique. Um, and because of that, we've had a, an excellent and very high success rate. Um, but certainly, um, if you're bone on bone on your shoulder and you're not looking for surgery, um, this is an excellent alternative for you, Diane. Janet M from 518 asks, how this works with spinal stenosis, back full of arthritis. Um, this is a good time to mention 30 for 30 and 60 for 60. So 30% of the population by the age of 30 will start having findings of arthritis in the back. Not everybody feels it, but findings. So if I did an x-ray, 100 people at the age of 30, 30%. Now go to the age of 60, 60% 60 of the population at the age of 60 are going to. So that's more than half. And obviously that's when a lot more people will start feeling these things and complaining about back things like back pain and stenosis and arthritic pain. Um, for us, we've been able to treat anybody as young as 17 and as old as 97. So we've, we've really spanned it, uh, a, a, a wide 80 year uh, age gap um, or age range, I should say, uh, and, and all successfully, I should say. Mary D from area code 518, severe low back pain, herniated disc, severe spinal stenosis. Uh, can anything help? Yes, we can help. But you're, you're between probably no longer getting injections and trying to avoid surgery, which is why I'm assuming you're asking this. Herniated disc and spinal stenosis and, and some of the pictures that I showed you before <clears throat> go hand in hand. Stenosis is the, the, the closure of, of, a, of an opening. And you saw that as the disc sort of pushes up and into the region, then, then it can create or impact that stenosis. It's like peanut butter and jelly, except obviously not as pleasant. Um, so herniated disc and spinal stenosis, very common uh, findings that go together, things that we treat all the time uh, with a high degree of success. Mary S.T. says, before I register, is this another webinar free? I'm interested in treatment for spinal stenosis. Again, stenosis, successful treatment. Uh, webinars and seminars are, are always going to be free for us. The educational part is, is an important part, part of this. If you don't understand what, what our therapy is doing for you, it's hard for you to, to know whether that this is right for you. Uh, in January 30th, again, we'll be in Montreal. Chance uh, for you, uh, Mary, uh, in the 514 area code to come, come see us. If you just go to um, richardkimmedicine.com, there'll be a pop-up and uh, a place where you can get free tickets to come see us. 
Uh, just initials here, BC, area code 613. Possibility of an in-home treatment for elderly patients, something I've never been asked before, um, but we like to think outside of the box. So please call us, uh, tell us what the details are, let us know how, uh, wh where this is located, what it's gonna be like. Um, we may be able to, to still help, um, but obviously we wanna understand your situation. Valerie C from 514, can this type of treatment help with migraines and bruxism? So migraines are headaches, uh, and obviously there's multiple sources. If your migraines are from your neck, uh, yes, it's a very clear connection, uh, something we could help. Uh, a lot of people with bruxism, sometimes they have TMJ. We've, believe it or not, 10 years having done this, we've done this. We've injected both platelet-rich plasma and stem cells into TMJ joints. Great success, great, great outcomes. Sandra B from Erico 315, cost of the stem cell to help with my back. Uh, for us, diagnosis is key. Therefore, a consultation is necessary. We need to understand what it is we're treating, um, how many levels, is it one level, is it eight levels? Help us understand that individual needs uh, vary uh, uh, significantly. Eddie from 514, had a car accident in 03, uh, injuries uh, such as herniated disc to L405, head injuries, been on medication, receiving injections. Now I'm having bloating, kidney cyst, stiffness, uh, causing mobility issues and memory fog. And when I'm, I'm assuming that's coming from both the injuries and from the medications, thoracic spine, lumbosacral spine, coccyx pain. Um, again, another heartbreaker here. Please help me. I was a top-notch sales executive making uh, $250,000 per year. Since 2004, I'm unable to work and have lost everything. I'm holding on to one thing, and that is hope. I hear you, Eddie. Um, and, you know, I, I don't um, know that I have something better than your hope. What, what I do have is... Uh, a, an excellent way to treat things like herniated discs and degenerative disc and low back pain and thoracic pain and lumbosacral pain and coccygeal pain. These are all areas that we have treated before. So please come, come see us, have a consultation. You have to remember that motor vehicle accidents are a violent disruption between two tissues that are together. So whether it was disc and bone or disc and nerve. It was a, it was a very sudden and forceful change and, and sometimes getting that back to normal, uh, it, it takes, um, it, it takes a, 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 you know, just a significant therapy. Uh, we've had many, many people who've had motor vehicle accidents and have been able to help them. So the, for us, these are very successful treatment areas. PRD from 418 says everything about arthritis, pain, secondary effects of stem cell treatment. If you're diabetic, <clears throat> up to what age stem cell treatment is effective? What are the reverse effects of the stem cell treatment? So arthritis is an accumulation of damage, uh, simply put. Um, and the purpose of the stem cell is to create new. It's to create new environment, new uh, uh, healed tissue. It's not going to... Uh, make your knee, your arthritis pain, your spine look like you were five. That's that's not what's going to happen. Um, but at the same time, uh, a dramatic reduction in pain. So diabetes um, is uh, uh, an additional complex medical problem. And this impacts multiple things. It increases surgery time. It increases your recovery time. It increases... Um, you know, your, your medication needs, uh, all of it. Uh, for us, the, uh, in our, our process is in office. It's very short downtime. So we're talking about with something with the least amount of impact. You get it done, you go home, you recover from home. Um, we've done this again in patients up to 97 years old uh, with, with, uh, with excellent results. The risk here, uh, and I think the reverse effect is you're asking about risk. Risk here is pretty low. Um, taking your cells, not somebody else's cells, going back into you to help you improve, to help you regenerate that tissue and, and uh, recover that, that area. 
All right, so that was the end of the questions. Some quick information here, and we've got one uh, Q and A um, uh, listed. So anybody who's attended this web webinar, uh, I want to offer you a free consultation. Um, the only um, thing that I ask of you is to call by this Friday by noon to schedule. You don't have to see us by Friday, but to call by Friday at noon. Our office is closed after Friday at noon. Uh, please mention that you did see us on the webinar um, and you've got to schedule that consult. Our phone number here is 518-871-9900. And for those in the Montreal number, um, there's a 514 number for you guys uh, that you can find on our webpage. Uh, our webpage is richardkimmedicine.com. Future webinars can see, be seen at slash webinars. If you're interested in getting your own MRI and want to come to us uh, with more information, feel free to schedule your own MRI at richardkimmedicine.com slash MRI. Uh, we'll call you, go you, uh, get you through the questionnaire, get you through the, the scheduling. And of course, consultation after that is, is still free. For all of those in the Montreal area or in Quebec or in, uh, uh, in, in the Canadian region, uh, we're doing an in-person consultation on January 30th. And again, if you go to richardkimmedicine.com, a pop-up will appear and uh, give you directions on, on how to uh, come see us. Uh, and we'd love to see you in person. Okay, so we've got uh, one question uh, from Paul. Would this help long thoracic nerve damage on going over a year? So great question. Um, so a long thoracic nerve is a nerve done uh, uh, that that uh, comes outside of the the rib cage, and it's something that can uh, descend down um, uh, down the, the 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 upper back there. So great question. We'd have to understand the extent of that damage. So where is the damage? How bad is the damage? How did you damage it? Was it surgery? Was it a car accident? Uh, can you still have some function of that long thoracic nerve or have you lost function completely? So these are all details uh, pretty important for us. Um, and if you have those sorts of uh, answers, uh, we, can, we can certainly um, uh, help answer that. Okay, um, so that's it for, uh, for us. Um, if you, if anybody has any further questions, happy to answer. I'm going to turn off the sharing here. And hopefully we'll see you guys in consultation. Uh, again, uh, uh, thank you for attending and uh, look forward to seeing everybody uh, at the Montreal seminar, Montreal seminar on January 30th.